For a considerable amount of time, the television reality show Gold Rush has been a favorite among viewers. The name Tony comes to mind whenever we discuss the Gold Rush. Tony is the one who triumphs over the monarch of the Klondike by virtue of his tenacity, determination, and golden touch. Despite the harsh conditions of the Alaskan wilderness, Tony Beats has acquired a fortune. However, have you ever given any attention to how wealthy Tony Beats is? I am curious about the amount of money he makes from the show, as well as the gold that he discovers. The first thing we need to do is investigate his history before we can learn about his earnings. The 15th of December, 1959 is the day that Tommy Beats, a gold producer from Gold Rush, etched his name into the annals of mining history. He was a member of the Kondik. Widen in the Netherlands is where he was born. After working for his family for a considerable amount of time and earning money by milking cows, Tony eventually relocated to Canada in the hope of finding better employment opportunities. It was in Dawson City, Yukon Territory, in 1984 when Beat began his mining career. It is common knowledge that he has been working in the construction sector for three years and that he has been employing children from the surrounding community. He is currently operating the Tamarack Mine. There is a law that states that those individuals who are able to hack the task, despite the fact that many others are unable to manage it, become vital members of the team and the Beats family membership. It was during the second season of the show that the Maverick made his first appearance on the show. At that time, he was providing guidance to a cast member named Todd Hoffman on the drilling of test holes and discussing his personal life when he was child. While Tommy was growing up in Burwood, Alaska, he became acquainted with Minnie, the lady who would eventually become his wife. In 1978, the two were neighbors and lived next door to one another. The two of them began dating and, after a period of 18 months, Tony made the decision to move to Canada and Minnie accompanied him there. At the time of their marriage, Tony and Minnie were both 24 years old and they would go on to have four children together. Regrettably, Kevin, Monica, Mike and Bianca all lost away in the year 1992 when they were only two and two years old. Every single one of the Beat children is involved in the Beat family business, with Minnie being in charge of the bookkeeping and paperwork. Tony and Minnie are the owners of a winter property in Arizona, and Beats is rumored to be the owner of a Mercedes convertible that is reported to be worth $145,000. His adventure started in the Netherlands, when he abandoned his farm in the hope of finding wealth and fame in the Canadian wilderness. He was motivated to travel to the Yukon by hearing stories of miners who made at least $1,000 per week in the region. Beats went on an experience that would forever alter his life. Beats' ambition to succeed dates back to his early teenage years in the Netherlands, and it was just a matter of when and how he determined to achieve his goals. In his own words, Tony Beat reflects on his early ascent to leadership. Beats was forced to take over the family farm after his father was involved in an accident that rendered him unable to work. This meant that he frequently found himself in command of men who were more than twice his age. At a relatively young age, he went on to become the boss. He made the decision that he needed to meet or exceed the standards of the people who had worked for him throughout his whole life, regardless of where he went. He has always been one step ahead of the rest of them, and he is doubtful about the future of farming in the Netherlands. If he wasn't a foreman within a week, well, he'd always been one step ahead of them. Together with his new wife, Minnie, Beats made the journey to Canada in the year 1980. Beating began on a dairy farm located close to Salmon Arm, British Columbia. Within the span of a few months, he had already established a new objective for himself, but that was not all. Word quickly spread throughout the Yukon, like wildfire miners who were making a fortune of $11,000 per week. In those days, that was equivalent to more than $3,000 on a weekly basis. After hearing the whispers, 
Tony Beats recognized his opportunity to get wealthy. Under the influence of the prospect of financial success, he fixed his sights on the same prize, unflinching and unflinchingly determined. After purchasing a plane ticket and traveling to White Horse, Beats arrived at White Horse. However, because he came too early in the season to find work in the gold mining industry, he decided to return to the farm for a few more months before trading in the milking machines of British Columbia for the oil pipelines of Alberta. He was working in the oil field when he was eventually able to secure a position at a Yukon gold mine, and he hasn't bothered to look back since then. Let us discuss the challenges he had in his early life, beginning with his lowly beginnings as a machine operator. Beats struggled to make a living by driving earth movers in the Tamarack mines. When Tony first started looking for gold in Dawson City, his mining career took off and became very successful. In the year 2018, he made a significant discovery in Eureka Creek, where he discovered 3,600 ounces of the precious metal. Hall was worth approximately $4.39 million on his own, but Tummy's legacy extends well beyond that. He is the proprietor of the Tamarack Gold Mines, which are located in the Klondike region of Yukon, Canada. These mines are more than just gold. He runs his mining operations with his wife Minnie by his side. His mining operations are a family affair. Minnie is not only responsible for maintaining the accounts, but she also operates as the spokesperson and model for Gorilla Cookies. His dogged tenacity and unwavering commitment to his profession eventually paid off over the course of several years. Within a short period of time, he established himself as one of the most prosperous miners in the area, having built up an incredible mining empire. At the present time, he is the proprietor of one of the most significant privately owned plaster gold mines in the region. On the other hand, anyone who believes that he is riding the gravy train to riches should reconsider their beliefs throughout the seven-month gold mining season. Beasts and his crew put in anything from 12 to 14 hours of work each day, frequently under harsh weather conditions, while also battling against the clock in constant malfunctions. On the other hand, I must warn you that this is a hands-on procedure. Despite the heroic efforts you put forth, it is not going to happen if you do not actually go out there every single day. There is never a guarantee of success. It was a reflection of the unpredictability of Tony's trade that his beats were random. If, at some point in the future, you are able to make $1 million in this business, the good ground is truly gone. I would recommend that you hold on to it with a great deal of vigilance because you could require it in the next year, and if it's on screen, life is like that. A persona is anything that can be used as a guide. According to Beats, who describes himself as a hands-on employer, he is a difficult person to please. The importance of perseverance and hard effort is something that he instills in his children at any opportunity that presents itself to him. The fact that Beats believes it is a risky moment for newbies to enter the business does not mean that he believes it is impossible for them to do so. On the other hand, he cautions potential customers to think in terms of the little. The Eureka Creek Mine, which is located in the middle of the Klondike, is another question that has to be answered. Crown Jewel of the Beats In this location, he is in charge of operating the Viking Dredge which is a massive floating industrial bucket that weighs 350 tons. At the end of the fifth season of Gold Rush, Beats paid a cool $1 million to acquire this antique dredge. Beats gave the Viking dredge a new lease on life after it had been sitting dormant for 30 years without being used. On the other hand, the path to being successful was not devoid of obstacles. During the course of six weeks, the dredge sank twice, putting at risk losses of more than $1,000 per hour. In spite of the obstacles that were placed in front of him, Beats persevered, and the Viking dredge is now churning through the fertile soil of Eureka Creek, extracting gold. However, Eureka Creek is only one component of Beats' mining empire. 
An additional major claim that he made more than three decades ago is that he is in charge of operations at Tamarack, incorporated his many businesses in the Klondike, have reportedly contributed to his net worth, which is estimated to be at around $15 million total. A question that may be on your mind right now is, how old is Tony Beats from Gold Rush? The fact that he is still working like a youngster despite being 64 years old is remarkable, but that is not all there is to say about the phenomenon that is the Gold Rush. The reality television series Gold Rush, which is shown on the Discovery Channel and covers the adventures and achievements of various gold mining firms that are owned by families, is largely responsible for Tony Beat's rise to worldwide popularity. Tony is a pivotal character on the show due to his powerful personality, remarkable leadership abilities, and exceptional gold prospecting capabilities. His astonishing net worth of $15 million makes Beats the richest cast member of Gold Rush. Beats is the richest cast member. The next person in line is Parker Schnibble, who is his co-star and has a net worth of $8 million. The American dream is exemplified by Tony, who went from working as a cow milker to being a millionaire in the mining industry. Aside from that, what is Tony Beat's current place of residence? Both Tony and Minnie have a lavish mansion in Maricopa, Arizona, where they make their home. A wooden balcony of their home, which they purchased for $315,000, offers breathtaking vistas of the surrounding area. In the midst of the wild grandeur of the Klondike, the Beats family takes pleasure in the conveniences that their Paradise Hill home provides. Tony has accomplished a great deal, but one of his most noteworthy achievements is the repair and management of the Viking dredge. This enormous industrial bucket dredge that is drifting in the water 350 tons is the astonishing weight of this enormous floating industrial bucket dredge. Tommy gave the Viking dredge a new lease on life after it had been inactive for 30 years as a result of his efforts. Currently, it is working its way through the fertile soil of the Klondike in order to extract gold. Although Legend is not one to spend a lot of money on expensive automobiles, he does have a good sense of quality. A glimpse into his world of automobiles is presented here. Tummy is the owner of a convertible Mercedes that is appraised to be worth approximately $145,000. Despite the fact that he does not flaunt his expensive automobiles, this particular one is evidence of his wealth, and his appreciation for well-made things. Outside of automobiles, Tony's primary love is mining. He has a significant amount of money invested in heavy-duty machinery. His fleet consists of a large number of trucks and specialized industrial machinery that he uses for his mining operations. The extraction of gold from the treacherous terrain of the Klondike requires these robust vehicles but that is not the only reason why they are necessary. His mining operations are mostly concentrated on the claim located on Paradise Hill. In spite of the fact that he does not directly own any land within the Klondike, he has staked claims to a number of different places, which gives him the permission to mine in those areas exclusively. Fans such as yourself are intrigued about the amount of land that he owns despite the fact that it is obvious that he has amassed a significant amount of income and a significant investment in land over the course of his career. Both Paradise Hill and Scriver Creek are purportedly in his ownership, according to reports. A total area of approximately 42,000 square meters is encompassed by Paradise Hill. In addition, supporters have determined that he has 163 claims in Tamarack, as indicated by the most recent statistics. It was Tony Indian Rivers. Another location in which Tony has set his claim is the vicinity of Scribner Creek. Despite the fact that the precise dimensions are not revealed, it is an addition to his large land holdings. And now, let's discuss Tony's career during the gold rush. Beats did not begin at the top, and he ascended to the top of the mountain. He went so far as to lease land to newcomers, freely sharing his knowledge and experience with them. 
Currently, he engages in regular transactions involving gold worth millions of dollars. This is evidence of his undoing dedication to the treasure hunt that is gold mining. But as time goes on, Rose is beginning to compete with Tony, who made his debut on the gold rush scene during the second season. However, it is his friendship with Parker Schnabel, a rising star in the mining industry, that truly shines out when compared to his first job, which was to provide guidance to fellow gold miner Todd Hoffman regarding the secrets of effective gold mining. In spite of the fact that Schnabel leases land from the Beats, the Beats dynamic is almost never amicable. In the course of their contacts, Beats serves as a harsh guide for Schnabel, who is subjected to relentless pressure from Beats. Schnabel comes from a family that is involved in gold mining, and Beats brings a grizzled, no-nonsense style to the table. Foster a competition that is driven by ambition, dedication, and the chase of gold. The enormous stakes and strong pressure that these miners are under are brought to light through their confrontations, which make for gripping television. Beats and his co-workers are portrayed as jewels of the contemporary era. Since his first appearance on Gold Rush, hunters all over the Klondike have been searching for the elusive yellow metal. They are armed with machinery that costs a million dollars. Despite the fact that Beats has seen a great deal of success and failure in his mining business, he continues to return to the harsh wilderness year after year. He is drawn to the outdoor lifestyle and the excitement of hunting. Even if he faces difficulties, he continues to return because he is driven by his desire for independence, adventure, and the search for wealth. Despite the fact that Beats takes pleasure in the wild lifestyle of the Klondike, there are consequences that come with a company broadcasting on television. There was one occasion in particular that is very noteworthy. A program clip resulted in fines for his business totaling $31,000. Even though mining already has a considerable influence on the environment, there are times when it can go beyond what is acceptable. The Viking baptism of a gold dredge machine that Beats and his team performed which involved dousing the surrounding pond with gasoline and setting it ablaze, infuriated the authorities who were in charge of safety and security. If I had to explain the facts, the financial compensation for Gold Rush's stars is often variable depending on a number of circumstances. These factors include the stars' level of expertise in their roles and their contribution to the success of the show in 2024, the stars have the ability to earn anywhere from $100,000 to $5 million per season, and this is not even close to being the maximum amount that they may earn. It is important to take note of the fact that members of the supporting cast, that include crew personnel, mechanics, and various team members, receive lower compensation. The amount of money they make from each episode ranges from $10,000 to $20,000. The revenue of the celebrities is not primarily generated from their salary. Rather, they frequently augment their earnings through endorsements, public appearances, and item sales, all of which have the potential to greatly increase their overall income. In the event that I were to discuss the success of the program, I would mention that it has also provided the stars with options to invest in their own mining operations, which has further increased the possible revenue they may make. Because of this, they are able to make the most of the exposure and experience that had been obtained during the gold rush. The duration of the event has also made it feasible for the state to broaden their sources of income, which is something that has been made possible by the program. There are some individuals who have dabbled in other business pursuits, such as investing in real estate or owning mining equipment companies in the final episode of the first season. Among males aged 18 to 49 and females aged 25 to 54, Gold Rush Alaska was selected as the Friday night program that received the highest number of viewers across all of our televisions. On the other hand, for all 13 seasons of the show, it has regularly ranked among the best unscripted cable programs, particularly among certain demographics such as men between the ages of 25 and 54. 
One of the most exciting aspects of Gold Rush is that it is broadcast in more than 170 nations and territories, which draws in a dedicated audience from all over the world. According to Parrot Analytics, a company that specializes in media measurement, the audience demand for Gold Russia in the United States is currently 17.8 times higher than the typical TV series. What this indicates is that people are actively searching for the show and discussing it online, which is a strong indication of engagement. Aside from that, Gold Rush is widely regarded as a revolutionary work in the factual soap opera genre. Combining aspects of documentaries with those of reality television shows several more shows that investigate extreme occupations and lifestyles have been made possible as a result of its success. In conclusion, it is evident that Gold Rush has established a strong connection with viewers all around the world, and its enduring appeal does not appear to be diminishing any time in the near future. The story of the Gold Rush continues to captivate audiences, and the financial fortunes of its stars continue to be just as fascinating as the precious metal that they are searching for. They strive to maintain a constant awareness of the shows that they enjoy watching. Sign up for the channel's channel. Our goal is to bring you the most recent and advanced information from the mysterious world.